I'm now with Phil Gabb from Gaia. Phil, very good to see you. So could we start, please, by if you could tell me a little bit about what Gaia does? Gaia is a global supplier of process equipment and solutions to many industries, food, dairy, chemical, and of course, pharmaceuticals. Okay, so obviously we're here to talk about the pharma aspect of the business. So tell me exactly what Gaia does in that field. In the field of pharmaceuticals, for solid dosage uh, production, we manufacture granulation, compression, materials handling, and also uh, we have a new range of continuous production solutions, of which this is our development machine, which allows us to prove to our customers how their product can be made in a continuous manner. Okay, so this is very much your star attraction then in many ways. It's the star attraction at the moment. I mean, continuous production is the biggest change to solid dosage production within the pharmaceutical industry for generations. So essentially what you're saying is you're moving away from that kind of batch processing into continuous production. And I assume there are lots of reasons for that, not least economics, less waste, I assume? Exactly. It's much cheaper to run. It's much cheaper to get a cheaper and faster to get a product from development phase into production itself, which of course is when the company starts making money. But there are also energy, resource, and quality benefits to using a continuous process rather than a batch process. Oh, that's interesting. Quality, I hadn't really thought of that because, of course, each batch has to be sample tested, doesn't it? Exactly. Whereas when you're using a continuous production, you measure the critical process parameters online. All cri critical quality attributes can be measured in real time, so you don't have to go through a lengthy and expensive qualification process after production. So am I right in thinking that if you have continuous production, you can very much tailor make your the amount for whichever client it is? Exactly. Your, your batch size, so to say, is now simply how long you run the machine yeah. for. Yeah. Okay, And that gives you a lot more flexibility. You can run a batch as small as a kilo, or you can run it for a few days and make hundreds of kilos. But it, this seems eminently simple and very logical. So why has this been such a holy grail? Um, a change in the approach from the regulatory authorities. To be fair, they, 10 years ago, they said they recognized that they were holding back the industry from developing continuous solutions because they hadn't really opened up to and encouraged people to change. They changed that approach. The industry recognized it, we recognized it, and we've developed this solution over the last 10 years, and it's gaining momentum month by month. And so in terms of market share and, and where you are in terms of the market, do you feel that you are leading the field? Uh, we certainly feel that way. I mean, we have over 50 installed references which are manufacturing drugs in a continuous manner. Uh, we don't think anybody else has quite got that level of experience yet, although others are trying to catch up now. Okay, so uh, well, can you just talk us through what, what this machine is doing at the moment? Certainly, yes. This is basically the granulation uh, process where we're starting with powder, we're adding liquid, we're putting it through a twin screw granulation process so that we end up with wet granules which we can then dry. So this is proving the basic unit operation of how we create granules which are what are used obviously to make tablets. Yeah. I'm, I'm really struck by how quiet it is. Well, it's a machine that's under control, okay? There's no reason for it to be noisy, uh, and we've actually now got it set and it's smooth, and obviously we're using a, a formulation that is also well known to us. So tell me, what is exactly coming out now of this uh, pipe at the bottom? What's coming out there are damp granules, so they have the correct uh, moisture content because we're measuring the quantity of liquid that we put into the powder very accurately. We're controlling it. In a, a real test situation, we would actually collect those in the drying chamber at the end and dry them, and we could then actually use those to make sample tablets to make sure that it has all the properties that we're actually looking for. And it's extraordinary because I, I know they're damp because I can smell them. Mm, you could actually touch them if you wish. It's perfectly safe. <laughs> is it? Yes. What are we making here? That is something I would have to check with one of my colleagues. But You'd have to kill me. I'd probably have to kill you first. <laughs> okay. Well, let me just do that. I mean, it, I mean, it's very, very slightly damp, isn't it? It's, but you can tell. You, well, you can tell it's damp. That's extraordinary, actually, and it's much finer than I anticipated. 
Yes, a lot of people make that mistake when you hear the word granules. Mm. They think it's going to be something quite expected, large. Yeah. No, all we're doing, the reason for granulation is to actually uh, bind the API and the excipients in the correct quantities to prevent um, segregation further on down the process, but also to give you the right particle size distribution to be able to compress it into a tablet that has the right physical properties. So, so now, what would happen now with this uh, powder or damp powder? It will get dried, it would get milled, to make sure that we have exactly the right um, particle size distribution, then it gets compressed into tablets. We also have solutions for other products where we don't go through this, we just mix the powders and feed them directly to the compression system, which makes it an even simpler process. I mean, it really is extraordinary. Um, game changing, I would say. It certainly is. I mean, if you, if you talk to anybody in solid doses production today, they recognize that continuous is the way forward, and that is the way that most companies are now looking to develop their new products. So tell me, what's the uh, reaction been here at CPHI uh, from new clients, existing clients, to this sort of process? Excellent. I mean, wherever we go with this, it's always of interest. Everybody wants to understand, to learn, and to see how it can be applied to their production process and to their products. Do people tend to have the same reaction I've had? <laughs> Very similar, yes. yes. It, it is an exciting development in what has traditionally been a very conservative industry. You know, pharmaceutical production hadn't changed for generations before that. The, the regulatory approach sort of restricted it a bit. Those shackles have been taken off and we've got something new to play with. So, so tell me, we're now at day three. It's been, it's been fantastic three days. It's been a long three days. And apart from having blisteringly sore feet, um, how's, how's the whole show been for you? The show's been good. You know, the, one of the benefits of CPHI is it's focused on pharma. You know, a lot of the big shows, either here in Germany or elsewhere in the world, are multi-industry. So, and whilst pharma is, of course, the most interesting for us, uh, you get a little bit swamped with all the food, chemical, uh, industrial approaches. So pharma isn't always the star of the show. Here, no doubt. Definitely the star, as are you, Phil. Thank you very much indeed. It's a pleasure. Thank you very much.